Wilson, to Dean Carter, to all of these heavyweights that are on this platform today. My mother, Coretta Scott King, I once said that freedom is never really won. Struggle is a never-ending process, excuse me. Freedom is never really won. You earn it and win it in every generation. Every generation must connect to and make their contribution to the freedom struggle. And I thank God that Nelson Mandela and the anti-apartheid movement was that connection to and contribution to the freedom struggle for my generation. This generation is going to have to find discover and awaken, more importantly, to its cause to make its contribution to the freedom struggle. Tonight, we obviously have heard a lot, and I want to remind you that any time something is repeated, it means that you are supposed to catch it and run with it. All right. All right. Some of what has been said and some of what will be said, I'm going to repeat. I'm honored to be here tonight, as so many of us are, to pay homage to one of the world's greatest humanitarians and leaders, Mr. Nelson Mandela. And I pause to thank God for Nelson Mandela. Because when I was wrestling with and struggling with anger in my life, and he emerged from the, that prison cell, releasing and letting go of his anger, he began for me my journey towards self-forgiveness and other forgiveness. And so I thank God for the gift of Nelson Mandela. He was great, as Pastor Warnock mentioned, because he refused to be a bitter man, but opted to be a better man than those who sought to destroy him and deny him. As I reflect on his life and the legacy he leaves behind, I can't help, Doug, but to think about a connection between the modern civil, day, civil rights movement and the movement for freedom in South Africa. It should not be lost on us tonight that the very day that President Nelson Mandela passed, December 5th, is the actual day that the Montgomery bus boycott started in 1955. Dr. Lafayette, the message to the world is that the only effective and lasting social change is through nonviolence. Starting on December 5, 1955, it was a nonviolent movement that set at liberty a people who had been shackled by a southern system of racial segregation. Almost 40 years later, Mandela would embrace nonviolence as a means for liberating a nation beset by an oppressive, repressive, and inhumane system of apartheid. In the words of our father, Martin, if you haven't found something worth dying for, you are not even fit to live. Nelson Mandela was more than fit to live. Both he and my daddy were committed, dedicated, and willing to sacrifice for a greater cause, even to the point of death. And as I reflect upon the sacrifice Mandela made, I can't help but remember the sacrifice my mother, Coretta Scott King, made dedicating her life to promoting nonviolent social change and committing her life to seeking justice for all humankind. I'm reminded as Dr. Lafayette already told us of the unique role that she was blessed to have in abolishing apartheid and helping to prepare South Africa for President Mandela's release 
and the subsequent election. Soon after that release, the State Department reached out to the King Center to develop that nonviolent voter education that would help to avert the potential violence. And the outcome was that 300,000 South Africans, both from urban and rural areas, were trained, and there was little to no bloodshed. During moments of meditation and reflection, I thought about the similarities of Nelson Mandela and Joseph in the Bible. Like Joseph, Mandela was in prison for a crime he did not commit. Uh -huh. Like Joseph, Mandela left yeah. the confines of imprisonment and became the head of state. Like Joseph, Madiba forgave those who had risen against him. Like Joseph, yeah. he refused to be imprisoned or held hostage by feelings of anger, resentment, bitterness, and revenge. Instead, the spirit of the Lord was yeah. upon Nelson Mandela. Yeah. For he was anointed to proclaim liberty to the captives, recovering a sight to the blind, yeah. to set at liberty those who were oppressed. Yes, he could have been a better man, but he was a better man. Yeah. It was not by accident that Nelson Mandela was chosen by God to lead the people of South Africa. There are very few people who could be in prison, kept away from their family and loved ones, and exit that same prison with a spirit of love and a desire for reconciliation. Reconciliation has the goal of turning an adversary into an ally. Uh -huh. which is what President Mandela did when he invited the warden and others to join him in unifying the country and bringing people together. Only a better man, and not a bitter man, could do that. As has already been said, my father reminded us of the interrelatedness and the interconnectedness of life. President Mandela understood that. He understood the importance of forgiveness, the value of nonviolence as a means for social change, and the need for unconditional love to save humanity. In his book, The Long Walk to Freedom, he said to us, no one is born hating another person because of the color of his skin, yeah. or his background, or his religion. Yeah. People must learn to hate. Yeah. And if they can learn to hate, they can be taught to love. For yeah. love comes more naturally to the human heart than its opposite. These words could only come from the lips of a better man and not a bitter man. Yes, sir. President Mandela left the world with a blueprint for how we should live by exemplifying the characteristics of a transformational and not a transactional leader who embraced the importance of nonviolence and reconciliation by engaging his adversaries to join with him in unifying the nation. As we throughout the world mourn the loss of this great humanitarian and statesman, let us now continue to honor his legacy by, yes, choosing nonviolence as a lifestyle and by building a global community based on peace, love, and prosperity. It's one thing to respect Mandela. It's another thing to pay homage and tribute to him. But the ultimate and greatest manner in which we can honor his memory uh -huh. is to go beyond the platitudes and acknowledgments and embody his example for living. He not only lived a great life, he taught us how to live. Yeah. Like Gandhi, like Martin, we carry Mandela's legacy forward yeah. when we choose nonviolence by loving unconditionally, Talk about it. leading honorably, yeah. living selflessly, yeah. giving indiscriminately, yeah. and forgiving completely. Yeah. Nelson Mandela was a better man, yeah. not a bitter man, yeah. who made our world a better place in which to live. And he's joined the cloud of witnesses. Yeah. Oh, yeah.
that are looking down upon us. They are rooting us on and cheering us on yeah. and reminding this generation that struggle is a never-ending process. Mama. Freedom is never really won. You must earn it and win it in every generation, but we got your back up in heaven.